Hi, uh, my name is Paolo Ruffino from the University of Liverpool. Thank you very much for inviting me to this event. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, contagion in, uh, in video games, in particular about one video game, Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, I'm particularly interested in, uh, in, uh, in this paper and how uh, video game players try to um, find ways to, to solve, to cure, to, to heal uh, video game characters and how to prevent contagion. I'm particularly curious also in uh, trying to see whether these forms of uh, representation and, and, and strategies of, of uh, virtual prevention have something in common with the ways in which we are we think and talk about the current uh, pandemic about uh, COVID-19. Um, the paper observes how video game how videos and images are produced and circulated by video game players across social media to negotiate their agency within the ludic simulation. And it argues that players' renegotiation of agency resonates with uh, some of the ways in which we are currently talking about the current crisis, and particularly in relation to the assumed able ease of citizens and their capacity to exercise their uh, will, their agency, in, uh, and their uh, on the surrounding environment, their ability to, for instance, to, to social distance or or to um, control uh, those around them. Um, the game that I'm uh, specifically looking at is uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, <clears throat> which is a game that requires a uh, little introduction. Not everyone is necessarily familiar with it, even though it's a massive uh, bestseller. It's uh, one of the um, uh, bestsellers of, uh, of, the, of the video game industry that sold over 30 million copies globally. It was released in October 2018 for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One by Rockstar Games, the same company behind the uh, franchise Grand Theft Auto, which is perhaps more, more popular. Um, it's a major production with a budget comparable to major Hollywood productions. Um, it is set in a fictional representation of the United States in 1899, specifically in the, the sort of Midwestern, Southern part of the United States. It's a vast open world with hundreds of characters, um, hours of dialogues, uh, animations, locations, etc. It takes a, a long time, more than 100 hours to be completed. The main character of the story, uh, or at least the character that the player controls is Arthur Morgan that you can see here in, this, in these pictures. Um, is a member of the uh, gang of uh, outlaws, uh, Van der Linde. Uh, the, the game follows the tropes of Western movies. So the gang engages in uh, criminal activities, uh, many adventures such as robbing banks and trains, anything that can provide the necessary means of survival. Um, however, contrary to the typical structure of video game narratives in uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, the, the character controlled by the player is not exactly or necessarily the main character of uh, the main driver of the story. Um, the Arthur is actually following the gang led by Dutch, Dutch von, van der Linde and Ozia Matthews. Uh, Arthur has a, quite a limited choice on what the group will do and how the story will unfold. Um, Arthur would like the group to become economically independent, but uh, in the end, they need to uh, continue engaging in criminal activities. He has a distant relationship with a woman, but he is unable to give any guarantees on, on his availability. Um, he uh, would like to, with the rest of the gang, to move to Central or South America to live a peaceful life, but these dreams of self-determination are always postponed. Um, as the story progresses, actually, their options become more and more limited. And... Um, Towards the end, a new uh, police force, a group of head hunters, is uh, uh, hunting the the uh, the gang and uh, further pushing them out from from the map and making these dreams and hopes of of uh, self fulfillment and also living a sort of anarchic life become more and less and less likely. Um, as Arthur realizes that their hopes of an independent and peaceful life will never materialize. 
he suffers from an unexpected respiratory crisis while walking through the streets of Saint Denis, which is a city in the gay model around the real uh, New Orleans. Uh, Arthur finds out that he has tuberculosis. And uh, as the doctor tells him, the, the illness is not curable in a, uh, at that time. So it will only become curable in uh, around 1920, 1930. From that moment, the main character is uh, aware of his imminent death and all the dialogues and actions are um, express this, this uh, knowledge, acknowledgement of, uh, of the imminent death of the character. Uh, the character himself is affected by, uh, by the illness. He has, um, is not as strong uh, as he was before. He needs to, to, to feed himself more frequently and so on. Uh, it's important to notice that the game does not tell the player when or where the contagion happened. Uh, it's simply, uh, there are some signs at some point that the player probably, the character is probably uh, less uh, uh, able to perform some actions, but they're not uh, rationalized. They're not discussed uh, by anyone in the game. It's only when this particular scene happens and then they can be uh, later reinterpreted as perhaps early signs of tuberculosis. <clears throat> Over the past two or three years, players have been trying to uh, problematize or discuss the possibility of finding a cure for Arthur or preventing his contagion. And there are countless videos on YouTube <coughs> that in one way or another talk about this. Um, of course, it's not uncommon to see thousands of videos made by players related to any new major release uh, of, of a video game. Um, video games are embedded in this sort of participatory co culture of social media. But there are a couple of aspects that make this uh, phenomenon quite uh, interesting for us. Uh, first of all, it's immediately evident that the tuberculosis is, is part of the narrative of the game. So imagining that this could be resolved, cured, or, or uh, avoided this uh, uh, doesn't match what is, appears in the game. The, the game has four alternative endings, and they, in each one of them, Arthur is affected by, by tuberculosis. Um, but second and more importantly, the community uh, surrounding these, these videos, uh, those who make these videos reply to other people make videos are seem to be actually very much aware that there is no solution. So even uh, the longer longer videos actually towards the end, the video maker usually acknowledges that of course it's not possible to actually find the cure. Um, There is a, a playlist that I've created that if you want to, to, to explore, you can look at some of these videos uh, uh, and, and look at them for, for yourself. Um, you can post the video if you like and copy the URL. Uh, it's a YouTube playlist. For the sake of this presentation, I'm focusing only on one video, um, which is uh, the um, how to prevent Arthur Morgan from being exposed to tuberculosis during mon money lending and other scenes. Uh, which is um, a video um, made by a user Doc1851 on uh, the 30th of November 2018. It lasts about 10 minutes, has been watched over 2 million times, has over 5,000 comments. And here the user ex is exploring the so-called Thomas Downs hypothesis, which is frequently mentioned in uh, the videos about Arthur, uh, Arthur, Arthur's cure. Uh, Thomas Downs is a farmer, you can see him in, in the picture, is a farmer in the game. Uh, the family has borrowed money from Arthur and his uh, uh, friends, so Arthur is uh, as a mission in the game where he must visit the farmer and collect the money. The farmer, however, is uh, severely sick uh, when Arthur approaches him, and players have been speculating, well, this might be the moment when Arthur gets tuberculosis, because he has, he's get, he, there is a non-interactive scene where he gets quite very close to his face. Um, so in the video, the user uh, spends 10 minutes documenting all the, all the strategies that he has been implementing to approach Thomas Downs without uh, um, oh, having Arthur wearing a face mask. Um, the, um, there are some paradoxical scenario being created in some uh, uh, context, uh, Arthur Morgan tries to shoot the farmer from distance and take the, the body and the corpse and take it somewhere else only to find out that the farmer will respawn. So there is no way to 
avoid the, the sort of physical proximity with the living body of the infected farmer. Towards the end, however, the user finds a way, a trick, so to speak, a bug in the game that allows uh, Arthur Morgan to enter this scene wearing uh, a mask. Um, now, uh, what would be expected would be to, to then to see if this scene actually changes the rest of the game. But surprisingly, um, the user uh, comments saying, I initially wanted to document the idea and possibility of protecting Arthur. I know the probability of changing the final outcome could be unlikely. However, Rockstar has provided us with an immersive and incredible open world game where anything and everything is possible. This was my second play through of RDR2. Unfortunately, I did not progress any farther past chapter five and that save file. Therefore, I cannot prove or display probable cause. So the um, um, the player decides not to continue playing the game. It doesn't spend uh, the, all the remaining hours playing the game to, to finally uh, check if this hypothesis is, is correct. And this explicit motivation, uh, through, as I highlighted through my emphasis, is to document the idea of possibility or possibility of protecting Arthur, not necessarily to find a cure. Um, it is more about the idea of sort of playing with this idea of, of representing the possibility of creating context where Arthur is uh, prevent, prevents his, his contagion. I've been watching these videos uh, following the search for a cure for Arthur for a couple of years. Uh, yeah, I intentionally used the verb to follow in its vagueness uh, and as a reference to Derrida's use of the word in his essay, the animal that therefore I am. That to follow here is being in a response to a call from something while not knowing exactly what we are following or who does the following. I've been exploring to what extent what I was looking at and looking for was perhaps another way of understanding the reason why I was looking or why I was searching. Uh, the methodology of data collection could be um, defined through Bates as a form of berry picking, um, which is not as cherry picking where you select what you like the most, but it's more about getting uh, uh, involved in the selection process, uh, embracing the erraticism of uh, being led from one clue to another, from one text to another, from one uh, um, uh, idea to another. Uh, a, a methodology that actually responds quite well to the structure of algorithmic suggestion that YouTube uh, presents to the viewer. Um, each video on Arthur's cure will, of course, always uh, uh, linking to an, yet another video and, and another one. Um, so through this sort of uh, uh, methodology, what I've been looking at, uh, or what I started noticing at some point, um, was that the players are not so much interested in the efficacy of their solutions. Videos are not instrumental to save Arthur. Uh, videos respond to a complex structure of feeling that emerges through an unresolved reading of the video game. Thus, I argue that what matters when watching the videos is, uh, through Camber and Zeliska, the productive rather than negative relationship between the event and its mediation, what the representations of the invisible contagion and its possible cure aim to produce in their viewers. And from my perspective, my feeling is that the videos have a soothing, reparative, restorative feeling. They heal the fracture. Uh, between representation, sorry, uh, between representation and um, 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 sorry, uh, sorry the heal the fracture between representation and events by re-enabling uh, players' agency. So in this sense, we could argue that videos remediate Arthur illness, and here I use the word with reference to Bolter and Grusin, to uh, play with this sort of double meaning of the word to remediate from the uh, uh, to, to, to restore, to reform, but also to heal from the Latin remedere, to heal uh, a fracture, something that remains uh, open. Um, the videos attempt to heal this uh, fracture open by the problematic relationship between the event of Arthur's sickness and its representation. Uh, in so doing, videos aim to restore players' agency even while being aware of its impossibility uh, in a game that has denied their control over the story of the game. 
Contrary to the typical structure of video games that give players control, or at least illusion of control over the narrative paths, uh, players here look for a way to imagine how they could be or could have been uh, in control. And these sort of delusional attempts of finding a cure are framed on a representational premise. Uh, they assume that the events of Arthur's contagion as a cause and origin uh, that can be represented through YouTube videos, and that the representation is separate to the events of its representation. They're rather than being, for instance, performatively produced uh, in a process of reinterpretation of the game that effectively creates the contagion and the cure in the game that is as none of these things. Um, so their search for re-enabling control over the game aims at preserving the uh, underlying assumption of most video games and, 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 and digital uh, uh, games and digital simulations where the, uh, the main character is usually uh, able-bodied. Uh, it's uh, frequently, as in the case of Arthur Morgan, a white man, uh, able-bodied, operating in a digital environment that is tied to the experience of the player. So the videos uh, on YouTube try to revalidate the presumption that video game characters act within a living tableau of non-player characters. In other words, if the contagion happens through breathing, then Arthur must have been able to distance himself from the source of infection. He must have been able to uh, uh, customize his appearance in order to prevent a physical proximity and, and contagion. Uh, he must have had at some point that, that option, that uh, kind of agency. And if it isn't represented in the game, then the players must re-enable the, the possibility uh, of um, of, of uh, uh, imagining that, that kind of control. Um, I started looking into this when I uh, completed the game and that was about one year before the COVID-19 pandemic started. Now, my feeling is that the imagination solicited by the videos on Arthur's Cure is framed on a similar imagination that many, uh, so brought about by many 3D models that we can sadly uh, familiar with over the past year and a half. Uh, 3D models and simulations are uh, produced by research centers and widely shared on social media, <coughs> creating an aesthetic of virus prevention. The subject of prevention of 3D models is imagined as being capable of social distancing, acting within a living tableau of non-player characters, these images remediate COVID-19 in the double sense of restoring and healing, certainly not healing the symptoms of the virus, but at least our sense of loss of agency. <clears throat> um, and I feel that just like the videos made by players of Red Dead Redemption 2, these models have a soothing, reparative, restorative effect on us by re-enabling our agency in the game space of our social relations. They play with the idea and possibility of protecting ourselves. But in doing so, they also hide the problems of class, gender, and race that effectively make, make it impossible uh, for many to follow the recommendations given to prevent the virus from spreading. Uh, the ideal subject of prevention strategy is imagined to be just like Arthur Morgan, to be uh, able-bodied, to be white, to be male, uh, it's even too easy to notice how many 3D models often use the default character of uh, the 3D software, which is very often a white, middle-aged uh, man. Uh, these models work as allegories of control, as Alex Galloway and Mackenzie work, which I cited earlier, said in relation to uh, strategy video games. Even though we know that control over social relations is a privilege, uh, we know that social distancing is not possible if you have for those who have caring responsibilities or those who have uh, must commute for work, those who must visit others or those who are uh, incarcerated uh, and so on. These images remediate COVID-19 in the double sense of restoring and healing the fractured separation between representation and events. So we struggle, I think, to cope with the idea as exactly as the players of Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, did, uh, that infections and contagion are not 
visible and the production of graphics 3D models of the virus work on us as restoring the idea and possibility of protecting ourselves. Knowing how the virus looks like and how many have it at the, any given moment might give us some reassurance that we are somewhat in control of our vision and knowledge of the pandemic. And we might even look at memes, uh, as I think many others are doing in this conference, as a source of ironic commentary, uh, which as such, of, of course, often reveal something that remains unspoken. Uh, memes on, around the point of origin about the patient zero, the beginning of the causal relation that leads to our current situation. They often reveal that we are probably aware, actually, that global pandemics do not exactly have a visible, identifiable, and unique uh, starting point. Uh, and if they do, it would be impossible to visualize it and reverse it, of course, uh, to undo the actions. Um, but that we still like to play with the idea that there might have been a precise beginning uh, and a series of linear cause-effect relations um, that could have been also, of course, reversed and prevented. Um, so to conclude, over the past two years, I've been following the search for a cure, uh, following a way to save the main character of Red Dead Redemption 2, Arthur Morgan, from contracting tuberculosis. And I argue that YouTube videos uh, document this research, uh, and they're not just instrumental, that is, they're not just seeking to identify a cure for the illness. Their authors and participants are shown to be aware it is not possible to resolve the issue. The, the videos are instead productive of effective responses. And therefore, I would like to conclude mostly actually with a question, thinking about to what extent the idea and possibility of protecting ourselves in times of global pandemic draws perhaps on some of the representational premises and the allegories of control of uh, digital play, and perhaps more broadly, of digital culture. Thank you very much for listening and be looking forward to your questions.